Hello, dear viewer. Welcome to another edition of Hope Sabbath School. It's a moment where we gather together to study the Word of God. And we thank the Lord Almighty for this opportunity where we always sit together as a family to study His Word. And we want to thank God and also thank Hope Channel, the manager and all the team. Um, God bless you for working for God. And we want to also inform you that keep watching Hope Channel because we have a lot of good things for you all the time. And keep reminding your family, the entire family, to always watch Hope Channel. Today, by God's grace, we are going to look at another wonderful topic in this quarter's Sabbath school. Last week, by God's grace, we looked at um, remembering the past and we realized that um, we need to remember what the Lord has done in our lives as Christians so that it can, to some extent, guide us in, in our present. And so as Christians, we shouldn't forget our past. And as, as Christians, we shouldn't forget what the Lord has done for us in time past. This week, um, um, we're going to look at another wonderful topic. And to help me to do this, I have wonderful friends here. Uh, who are going to help me to do the discussion. I'm going to start from the only lady amongst us uh, in the person of Councillor Mrs. Perfect Odru. Um, Councillor, you're welcome. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, how is the family? By God's grace, you're fine. We thank God. And, and your church and the district? Yeah, Ashaman Estate and Legon District SDA Church. Wow. We are all doing so well. And now my adopted church, King of Glory, hmm. they are also fine. We thank God <laughs> for that. Next to him is my dear brother. Please, Pastor, introduce yourself to my <laughs> viewers. Oh, I am your servant, Michael Kwabna Loas, a district pastor for New Life, Ashaman hmm. District. Uh, that is New Life District in Ashaman sure. and Meridian Ghana Conference. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, me. yeah, yeah. And the <laughs> health director of uh, Meridian, Meridian Ghana, Ghana Conference. Conference. He also yes. happens to be a co-host of this wonderful program. And next to Pastor Loas is my dear brother. Please, can you introduce yourself to my viewers? Well, okay. I am Isaac Mafo, a member of Asalam Down SDA Church and also a staff of um, Goa. PLC. All right. Thank you so much and thanks for coming. Um, today we're going to look at a wonderful topic and before we do that I would want um, Councillor Perfect to pray with us. Let's bow for prayers. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for being with us once again to study your word. We invite you into our midst. Come and speak through us. Let those listening to us, watching us, be inspired by what we say over here. Let your word reach a fertile ground so that it's going to multiply. We thank you for being with us. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray. Amen. 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 Longing for God in Zion. Longing for God in Zion. Our memory test is from Psalm 84, verse 2. Our brother Isaac Marfu will read for us. Isaac, yeah. Okay, so um, Psalm 84, verse 2, that's where our memory verse is being taken from. And it, it reads, My soul longs, yes, even faints for the court of the Lord. My heart and flesh cry to the living God. Amen. 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 This week, um, we shall focus on the troops Zion, as expressed, as expressed in the book of Psalms, in Psalm 46, Psalm 84, Psalm 87, Psalm 122, and Psalm 125. Psalms in full of hope and expectation of the righteous to visit and dwell securely in God's sanctuary, a refuge of safety and peace. The concept of Zion in these lessons uh, or in scripture is itself a mix of geography, politics, and theology. We shall consider the, these differences and also um, try to 
understand Zion's spiritual meaning of God's people in the past as well as for ourselves who are in urgent need today of the hope of Zion or, or, or in the hope of Zion's office. And so as, as Christians, the need for us to have the hope of Zion. And that's basically what we are going to do for today's um, discussion. And so I would want to start from Pastor Kwabna Luas. Longing for God in Zion. What is your take on the, on the caption and the memory test? All right, thank you so much. Uh, one of my sisters loved this program so well. Mm. She's called Gertrude Frimpong in Canada. All right. And I discovered she always follows us. So, Melchia, our regards to you on this day. God bless you for watching and calling people's attention to it. If we take the memory test, we see that, indeed, Zion is an important place. Mm. So, what is the meaning of this Zion in the first place? Why Zion? Zion uh, is Jerusalem, where the city uh, was taken by David and Judah from the Jebusites. Mm -hmm. And it is between two hills, so they name it, uh, they, they kept the name Zion, Zion. over there. Mm -hmm. And it is, if you look at the Old Testament, we have it used about 125 times. Exactly. And then you go to the New Testament, we have it uh, some few occasions, about five. And then two of them being quotation directly from the Old Testament. And the book of Isaiah has it about 46 times. And you take Psalms 38 times. So you put them together and Zion becomes much important. And so you look at Psalm 84. And that uh, is where our test becomes much meaningful with the title. Because in that, we see that we are longing for God. So why is God calling our attention? And why do we need Mount Zion? Why do we need uh, the presence of God mm. in our lives in the first place? So your Zion, the Zion we are studying in the book of Psalms, is the physical Zion that is found in Israel, mm -hmm. where Jerusalem was situated. And then our Zion today is something I am seeing as the scripture says that my soul longs, mm -hmm. yes, even faints for the courts of the Lord the sanctuary of God, the presence of God, the atmosphere of God, my heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. So if your Zion doesn't have the living God and it's a different God, that's where the lesson is drawing your attention and your mind. That please make a turn and long for God, the God who is the living God in Zion. So that God could be found in the sanctuary, but it says that it is not built with hands. And it, it also means that this temple is the whole temple of the, the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And so when you don't carry yourself very well, it means that you are uh, not taking care of the Zion. You are not longing for the God who is in Zion. So God must be in us so mm. that our lives can long every day to walk with him throughout till the end. When he will translate us to the Zion, the ultimate Zion, which is the heaven that God has prepared for us. And ultimately we will come back to this planet called Earth. And that is the final Zion, which is the new Earth and the new heavens that God is making and has promised that he will take us there. We mm. will come back again and we will we long for that. And that's why we need to long for God. All right, Councillor Perfect, do we still have to long for Zion? Please, your take on the caption and the memory test. <clears throat> longing for God in Zion. So longing for God in a sanctuary, longing for God in Jerusalem. Zion can represent Jerusalem, can also yeah. be a sanctuary. So now it's longing for God in the church, mm. longing to have a fellowship with God in his presence, a place that is designated that this is where we are all coming together mm -hmm. to meet and praise the Lord. David also says in Psalm that I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into mm -hmm. the house of the Lord. So being in the house of the Lord should make you glad. Mm -hmm. You planning to go there should make you glad. So if you distance yourself away from the presence of God, like the temple for a longer time, not just the temple, you having a personal communion also with God, that should make, it should symbolize to you that you are drifting away from God. Mm -hmm. Because the constant encounter with God, a constant encounter with Jesus, 
helps you to know your fault, helps you to know how much you, you are in need of the saving grace of our Messiah. Mm -hmm. So longing for God in Zion is what every Christian should be doing. We should long for the fellowship of the saints. We should long to, in and within ourselves, if not a congregation, to praise him and worship him daily. All right. Um, but Isaac, why should I long for Zion? Yeah. We should long for Zion because Zion, in actual sense, is a symbolic of the beautiful place God has promised us of. Mm -hmm. The place, heaven that God has promised us of. And the Zion gives us the hope and the, it, gives, it serves us a source of hope and joy. As the Bible tells us, Christian, tells we the Christians, the city, um, the, the beautiful city, or the Zion, is actually the, the beautiful city that God has actually promised us. And that becomes actually the place that God lives, uh, the place God dwells. So it's a place that we all long to be. In our life, what do you actually long for? Do you long to be with God? Or what is your greatest desire? What do you actually aspire to attain in your life in this world? It, it, is, it, will, it will be a great achievement if we all position ourselves and do what God expects us to do and be on his path and make sure that when God descends and he is calling his people to be with him in his beautiful city, the, the place that he has prepared for us, we should position ourselves that we will be counted by the people that uh, he will be called. All right. Um, Zion represented God's living presence among his people as the people of Israel are God's chosen people, so is Zion um, God's chosen mountain. When you read Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6, the Bible makes it very clear to us that, For you are a holy people to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for his own possession out of all the people who are on the face of the earth. And so from Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6, we can see that Israel is God's chosen people. And so if you also read from Psalm 87, verse 1, the Bible makes it very clear to us. His foundation is in the holy mountains. It also makes it clear that the Lord himself also chose uh, Mount Zion as his dwelling place. And that leads us to understand that indeed as Christians, a day in, a day in God's court is better than um, a thousand outside God's court. Um, starting from Pastor Loas, is it really true that a day in God's sanctuary a day in Zion, a day in today's terms, a day in God's church is better than um, a thousand years. Pastor Lewis. Yes, uh, Pastor, yes, that's right. That is really what Psalm 84 is about. So who comes there? If you will come there, you need to long for him. Hmm. If you don't long for him, you won't find yourself there. And both small and great. So let me quickly read. It's only 12 verses of right. this chapter. All it right. says, How lovely is your dwelling place. I'm reading from the New Language Translation. O Lord of heaven's armies, I long, yes, I faint with longing to enter the courts of the Lord. With my whole being, body, and soul, I will shout joyfully to the living God. Even the sparrow find a home 
finds a home and the swallow builds a nest and raises her young at a place near your altar. O Lord of heaven's armies and my King and my God, what joy for those who can live in your house always singing your praises. What joy for those whose strength comes from the Lord who have set their minds on pilgrimage to Jerusalem. When they walk through the valley of weeping, it will become a place of refreshing springs. The autumn rains will clothe it with blessings. They will continue to grow stronger and each of them will appear before God in Jerusalem. O Lord of heaven's armies, hear my prayer. Listen, O God of Jacob. O God, look with favor upon the king, our shield. Show favor to the one who have anointed. A single day in your court is better than a thousand anywhere else. I would rather be a gatekeeper in the house of, the of my God mm. than live the good life in the homes of the wicked. For the Lord God is our sun and shield. He gives us grace and glory. The Lord will withhold no good thing from those who do what is right. And the last verse says, O Lord of heaven's armies, what joy for those who trust in you. So, Pastor, yes, sir. why shouldn't I be a gatekeeper in the house of God, in the presence of God, mm -hmm. rather than to go and spend it elsewhere? Because research has shown that those who fellowship, who go to church at least twice a week, are able to extend their lives for 10 solid years. They have an advantage of longevity than those who don't go to church. Mm -hmm. This is what the figures, the statistics is showing. But with what we have as children of God and with Psalm 84, it gives me hope that even though I may be weeping, things will, be, will not be going the way I am expected them to go. If I spend time with God, if I allow God's presence to be with me, I am going to be blessed. And so it is better for me to spend time. So do not reject meeting together, fellowshipping and praising God. One point I want to make and then I learned is that you will realize that he says that what joy for those whose strength comes from the Lord. Mm -hmm. Maybe you are weak. Maybe things are not adding up to you. Please come to Jesus Christ. Spend time with him in his house. And as you build longevity here on earth, the Lord will build resilience in you. You will mm -hmm. be able to face any crisis and challenge and difficulty. And that is going to serve as a blessing for you. So the court of Zion is a place that we need to be. And by doing that, the Lord's blessings will always be upon us. So we will be happy in the presence of God. And how do those who go there act? We act they turn sorrow into blessings. They grow every day in power. And since no human being can physically be in the court of Zion, that is God's abode in heaven, mm -hmm. the Lord has given us prayer, that our prayer can rise there at any point in time when you call, your, your voice will reach heaven and your requests and petitions will be made known. God answers your prayers and is your son. From those rays, he will radiate the blessings and protections to shield your life here on earth. Thank you, Pastor. Good. It's so good to be in the courts of the Lord. David made it clear in Psalm 23, the last verse that, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. He also echoed it in Psalm 27, verse 4. He said, one thing have I asked from the Lord, that I shall seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all <coughs> the days of my life. David was longing to, to dwell in the presence of the Lord. Counselor Perfect, how should I, as a Christian, long to dwell in the presence of the Lord? <clears throat> you see, there are enormous benefits if you dwell in the presence of the Lord. Yeah. The first is you have a chance to worship God. Okay. And you worshiping God is your sole mandate for you being created. Mm -hmm. God created us to worship him. So when you are in his presence, you are worshiping him. That is your utmost duty mm -hmm. to praise him, to mm -hmm. lift him up, to make him big above all the nations. So first, you are worshiping him. You worship him. He's also going to bless you. He's going to make you flourish. He's going to protect you. And you are going to have the goodness that he has promised you. The sunshine, the blessings are going to 
fall on you. Then it's also an opportunity to fellowship with like believers, people of the same faith, people of like-mindedness. You see, when you go to church, I always say this, it's not just the spiritual aspect, but I have social aspects attached to our services. Sure. You see, you belong to a community of believers. We, they become your family. You have grandmothers, you have aunties, uncles. When, whenever there's an issue, you go, you are bereaved, you are, you are grieving. You see these people coming around mm -hmm. to cheer you to up. Cheer you up. Okay. Whenever you are in trouble, you see them giving you pieces of advice, experience that they have gone through. You tap from them, you, it helps you to um, move on in life. You also realize that even when you interact with them, you realize that as human beings, we're not created in isolation. We right. move in a group. So the more you go to church, the more you have fellowship with God and interact with like people, you realize that it boosts your dopamine. Mm. You are happy. Sure. Yes, I realize that most of the times, Adventists, we go to for the, it's from sis to six. sis. Sure. But when sunset you go to sunset, sunset exactly. to sunset. But when you go for our Sabbath school start at nine o'clock, then our Vespa is 5.30 says. You realize that even that time, when we say the Vespa, Vespa and everything, the sundown, you re we are still around saying hi, hi. we meet and mm -hmm. all, that Sunday we are back. Mm -hmm. Wednesday we are back. Even I always say that when we close, it seems the service extends you to the outside. You still see people outside. talking yes. around. It will take 10 minutes, like 15 that. minutes sure. before you see us departing. Mm. So you realize that we like the interaction. And mm. when you go home, you feel... Free, relieved, relieved yeah. Yeah. of all the stress and all that. So the church is also a therapy on its own. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's a great benefit. If you decide to absent yourself from church activities, realize that you are not worshiping God because we were created to worship him. And you are also not benefiting socially. Because sometimes when we have fullness and all that, because we are not participating that much, people yeah. who come around are quite small. Mm -hmm. We need each other. So it's a good avenue. And I like to say that we are talking about longing for God in Zion, the sanctuary, the temple. Mm -hmm. But we should also know that our body is also a temple of the Lord. Mm -hmm. So in as much as we want to always dwell in the presence of the Lord, worship him, we should also treat that one that God has given us. We should use it to praise him more. Mm -hmm. We should edify it with good things, not things that will destroy it and make God seem less in our lives. We should also remember that our body is the temple of God. And so if we are longing to be in the presence of God all the time, we should also remember to keep our bodies clean and good in, and in good shape so that the Lord himself will be happy whenever he sees us. Um, before, um, Pastor Lovas, I would want you to come in, but before then, I Isaac, please, your, your, your final take on this one. A day in God's court is better than thousand years outside his court. Is it really true? Yes. <clears throat> Yes, when you long to be with God, mm -hmm. you, you actually become close to the Almighty God. You, you establish that nearness to the Almighty God. All right. And that brings or that creates a relationship between you and God. And out of this relationship, you achieve great happiness out of this relationship that you have with God. Mm -hmm. You being close to the Almighty God, you praise him, and out of the praises that you usher unto the Almighty God, you find great strength. You find strength out of, the, out of your relationship with God. And with that, you also trust him. Right. And with this, God has promised, or he has, he has promised of showering his blessings unto us. So, as the lesson tells us, Bless, the showering of God's blessings first goes, goes to those who are found at, at his feet. If you always try to be in the presence of God, you receive, you receive his blessings in abundance. Amen. Before it goes to those who always make, make their way to the, to the house of God. Mm -hmm. Before it reaches the ends of the world. All right. So we have all come to the, to the conclusion that it is always good to fellowship with God. It is always good to fellowship with um, colleagues, friends, families in, in the presence of God. 
And it's so good when we do that. It gives us inward happiness. Pastor Lewis, before you add your, 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 your final comment on this subject, um, touch on this one too. Why should we pray for, why should the people at that time pray for the peace of Jerusalem? And how can we relate it to our days today? All right. Thank you so much. Uh, my sister laid a point, and I, w I wanted to put uh, something on top of it, mm. uh, touching on the social aspect. All right. Uh, as a church, I think uh, if we read from uh, this verse, as we've already read, it says, For the Lord God is our sun and shield. He gives us grace and glory. The Lord would, will withhold no good thing from those who do what is right. Mm. When you look at the church, we put emphasis on spirituality. Okay. And we leave the other aspect, the component that God has given unto us. If this body is uh, the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit, it means that we need to take care of it. And so the physical aspect, we need to pay attention. The social aspect, the emotional aspect, the mental aspect, and also the uh, spiritual, which sure. we cannot ignore. But the emphasis is mostly laid on prayer Bible study, prayer Bible study, prayer Bible study. You hardly see or experience social activities among us. It doesn't mean that when we are in the presence of God, we should be holier than thou, we should portray, we are in the spirit and this and that. No, there are times we need to make conscious effort. By that, we will be growing as a people. And that is the joy of staying close to God. When we do that, we will have the mental powers and we will have the emotional ability to stand. People are suffering in their marriages, their homes. And pastor, it is the church in the presence of God that they will find consolace. But when they come there and everything is tense, based on spirituality, spirituality, at the end of the day, it's going to be dangerous. So let's try to uh, have all these five balance and it will be a blessing. And that is why we belong to a nation. Mm. We are here talking peacefully and my dear viewer is watching Mm. happily because there is peace. There's peace in the if country. If there is war in the country, I tell you that no internet will be working. All right. If you would uh, doubt that, call and uh, you'll find out from Hamas and Israel and go to Ukraine and see how they are suffering. Hospitals going down and buildings are being dropped down and food scarcity. All and right. so if God says that pray for Zion's peace, hmm. then he knows what he's talking about right. because you are part of it. So as we enter uh, closely very soon into the elections, please let's value every human life. Blood is very important. Nobody has been able to create blood from the laboratory. It tells you that you cannot just pour down blood because of elections, because somebody needs job. Please let us all try as much as possible to pray that at this time, God will stay the hands of the enemy and God will do that. If faithful Christians, faithful children of God will call on him, he will answer because this is Zion. We are the Zions walking around these days because the spirit of the Lord is in us. When we team up to pray, God will answer us and that will be a blessing mm. to us. Praying for Jerusalem, God demanded from his people or requested from his people that when they meet as, as a church in their, in, their, in their homes. God expected that the people would pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And so as Christians today, should we also pray for the peace of Ghana? Should we also pray for the peace of our community in which we find ourselves? Should we also pray for the peace of where we are working? Um, must it be my responsibility as a Christian to do all these things for my nation, for my community, for, for the kind of job I do. Councillor Perfect. It's very good as a Christian mm. to pray for peace for your nation. Because as Pastor said, if the nation is at war, you also you are at war. So you need to constantly pray for the peace of the nation, not just the nation, the community you find yourself in the church you find yourself in, the family that you belong to. You see, just praying for peace, we say pray for peace, but you pray for peace and you must also act in peace. You can't just pray for peace and your words will be for war. Mm -hmm. You open mm -hmm. your words, it's about war, it's about instigating um, one another, it's not good. So as you pray for peace, let your words also be of peace. Let your words be of kindness. I always say that people are going through a lot. So the words that you say 
should be comforting to people. If you cannot comfort people, it's better you shut up your mouth. Mm -hmm. You don't alter the rest. Because you see, our words are powerful. So pray for the peace of Ghana. We are about to enter into election year. Pray for peace of Ghana. And things that comment that you realize that is going to bring tri uh, tribal things and political things, mm -hmm. do well to desist from that. Because God wants us to be united. And in unity, we become strong. Mm -hmm. If we are not united, we can't fight our common foe, which is Satan. So in church, you need to pray for your church. Learn to live at peace with your church. If you have any issue with anybody, the Bible admonishes us that we go to the person. If you can't go to the person or you went once and it was not successful, it was fruitful, it's best you seek an elder. Somebody of higher authority, somebody the person can listen to, go to them. If they don't listen to it, you don't need to fight them. Treat them as if they are unbelievers. Mm -hmm. And with the unbelievers, the Bible also says that we should continue to pray for unbelievers. So you just continue to offer that prayer. But don't go and instigate any trouble. Don't go and be the gossip, a little thing that is going to undermine the peace that we already have. And if we're in a family too, mostly the extended family, you realize that most people are at war with each other. But if we're a Christian, you should be the one who is supposed to unify the family members. You are not supposed to bring division between them. If you had something and it's supposed to be private, don't go about broadcasting it. Bringing strife between brothers and sisters is not good because in unity, we are more stronger. So the Bible is saying that we should pray for Jerusalem because if Jerusalem is having peace, we can worship God in peace. We can also fellowship with each other and we'll be living in peace and we are going to prosper. In peace, we progress. If we don't have peace, we are all going to retrogress. So mm. let us do well to pray for our country, our community, our church, and our family. And let us learn to live in peace. Not just praying for the peace, but at it in our lives to live in peace. All right. We need to pray for the peace of our nation. In Psalm 122, verses 7 to 9, the Bible makes it very clear to us that may peace be within your walls and prosperity within your places. For the sake of my brothers and my friends, I will now say, may peace be within you. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your good. Brother Isaac, yes. do I have to care and seek the goodness and the peace of God in his sanctuary? Bringing it down to our churches. Sometimes you see... We are building the church of God and people think that God is within your heart. And so there's no need mm. for you to even support the, the, the building of God's church. Um, looking at the text we just read, which the Lord is admonishing us to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, to pray for the peace of his church. Um, what role should I play as a Christian in doing that to God? As a Christian, um, as the Bible, uh, as the text that you just read tells us, we need to pray for the nation. We need to pray for the nation so that as God admonish, admonishes us to, 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 to preach his salvation to others, mm. if there is peace, in the country or if there is peace we will be able to preach the uh, god's peace and salvation to the country and it's not only about we praying it's about we praying for the peace of the nation and also being having peace with god and we being united with others when we, when we are all united and also we have peace with god we shall surely prosper Mm. And that's what, that's what God wants us to do. So God is actually calling on us to pray for the peace of the nation so that we can preach about his peace. Mm. We can preach for the salvation that he has for the world. The Lord told the Israelites when they were in Babylon that they should seek the good of, of the community. They should pray for the prosperity of, of their of their country and so my dear viewer it is your responsibility as a good Christian to pray 
for the nation, to pray for the prosperity of the nation. We should not think that because we are Seventh-day Adventists, because I'm a Christian, um, it, it's, it's a matter of politics. Uh, they are politicians. They are doing their own thing. Yes, it is very, very important for you as a Christian to pray for, for the good of this country. And for, for, for that reason, we want to admonish all our dear viewers that this very year is election year. A lot of things do go on during election years. And so, as Christians, let us pray for the peace of this noble country of ours. And when you also look at Psalm 87, reading from verses 1 and 2, I would want Pastor Luas to read that for us. Psalm 87, 1 and 2. What, um, when you look at the text, what makes um, Zion such an esteemed place to the people of God? Right, he says, uh, on the holy mountain stands the city founded by God, by mm. the Lord. He leaves, he loves the city of Jerusalem mm -hmm. more than any other city in Israel. Mm. That is very perfect, and that's God's description mm -hmm. uh, from the psalmist's perspective. Exactly, that he loves Jerusalem. And so Zion surpasses all other mountains. Mm -hmm. You know, it's between two hills, but the real meaning from the Canaanites uh, is something that is a mountain yeah. and not hill. So the, the, the mountain supersedes. After the temple was built, Zion is encompassed uh, on Mount Moriah, sure. which we know what happened over there with Abraham. And so uh, we see that it is a place, no place could better teach the plan of salvation or redemption than that place. And that is why Psalm 87, the verse 3 says that glorious things have been said of you, city of God. Mm. And the sons and daughters of Zion, the salvation that comes from Zion will also attract. And this is something that is so marvelous. The verse 4 to 6 says that it attracts people from all nations. So does it mean that God has placed you, he has placed me, he has placed his church, that we will be like a magnet to attract people to us? Or we become people who scatter, who expel others, even those around us in our close cycles. But with Psalm 87, it draws our attention that we should be people who should bring people together so that people will come to know about God. So all who accept this salvation will be recorded as born in Zion. If you want to belong to a particular country, you need to have citizenship of that country. The moment you accept God, the moment you believe in him, he makes you part of Zion and that you were born over there. And the last verse is some, very intriguing. It says mm -hmm. that it is the source of all inspiration. So if uh, quickly I read, it says the people will play flutes and sing. Mm -hmm. The source of my life springs from Jerusalem. That means that if there is a place where uh, you have your source of life, would you want to cut off the source? or you always want to be glued there. And that is why God doesn't want us to cut off from him. Because if we do, we will lose our source of life. So we need to praise and uh, thank God for Zion, Mount Zion. Mount Zion is that stone that made into a mountain and fills the earth in Daniel chapter 2, verses 44 mm -hmm. to 45. Very soon he is coming, and this earth will be destroyed. And his kingdom will be established. That is where we will stay forever and ever. So on that mountain, we, are, we who are born on it will dwell there forever and ever as in Revelation chapter 14 verse 1. So God is calling you. God is inviting me that he wants us to belong to this Mount Zion, which he is prepared for us from the perspective of Psalm 87. Mm -hmm. We have come to realize that Zion can represent the church of God here on earth in our time. And so if Zion was the home of all nations, then Councillor Perfect, I want to put it to you and ask, <laughs> <laughs> how can we make the church of God the home of all the people around us? The church is 
actually acting as a home for everybody mm. because in the church we don't discriminate. New Testament make us aware that in Christ there's no Jew, there's no Gentile, there's sure. no slave, there's no free, there's mm. no bond of free, there's no man or woman. Mm. So in Christ we are one. Mm -hmm. So no matter your identity, when you come to Christ we accept you. All right. No matter the sins that you have committed in the past, you could be a murderer, you could be what? God accept all sinners. All it's right. just that God hates sin, but accepts sinners. And mm. the church is a big hospital mm -hmm. that we are all in and we are waiting for our turn to be healed. Some are having big ones that they are on life support. Others are just a little things and we are well to go. Right. So the church in the programs that they do, the preaching that you realize that every day the word of God goes forth so that we'll be healed spiritually and mm -hmm. physically will be fit so that when he comes we'll be able to enter his kingdom but you see the church as we said is a formal place of worshiping worship. god okay you can worship god anytime anywhere but the church is a formal place to worship god and when we talk about worship we talk about services that are formally that we do exactly. so i can be at home and pray and praise the lord but it's not like the church that you have the choir ministering to you mm -hmm. it's not like the church that we have the other functionalists performing their mm -hmm. duty because all that they perform in the church helps you to see how magnificent God is. Sure. When we, um, when divine service is about to start and the into my heart goes and um, the call to worship call comes, to worship. then the Lord is in the holy temple, we realize that the place is solemn. Mm. So you can worship God anywhere, but we always advise that don't neglect the fellowship of the saints right. because that is where the formal aspects is done. And as you said, the church is big. The church entails everybody. You can be American, a Canadian. The church um, engulfs everybody and accepts everybody. And the gates of hell cannot overcome, overcome the church. The church is the remnant that Jesus Christ is coming to take. Thank you very much. If, if Zion was the home of all nations, then the church must also be the home of all. Um, I want Isaac to start, but Pastor Loas, I would want to hear your view on this. What are some of the things that we do in the church that, that pushes a lot of people away from the church? If, if the, the studies is telling us that Zion was the home of all the nations, and that, that means the church must equally be the home of all, in any community you find a Seventh-day Adventist church, it's supposed to be the home for every individual in the community. But I want to find out, what are some of the things that we do that, that, that pushes a lot of people away from the, the, the place that's supposed to be a home for all? Isaac, please tell me a few of them, and Pastor Loas will also add his voice to that. Yeah, that happens when in the church, we start discriminating and we start tagging other people to be sinners and project ourselves as righteous over others. Mm. That's when it will drive people away from the church. All right. But as we know, Jesus Christ brought redemption to the whole entire world. Jesus did not discriminate. He came to save all of us mm. and that was when Jesus came, we, um, the Gentiles and the Jews were found in one church worshipping and enjoying the redemption of God. So we need to welcome everyone who is ever ready to accept God as his personal saviour. Pastor Lewis, yes, sir. a quick one. You, uh, we realise that our sister portrayed a scenario that it's a hospital mm -hmm. and once it's a hospital and you have people with uh, tummy ache some with headaches some may be mental disorders uh, that can cause them to even take a machete to use it on others these things are bound to happen it mm -hmm. means that we are not fully repented we are not yet glorified so we will see these things as a result of selfishness somebody comes to the church not because he needs salvation. He may meet Christ over there and finally that ultimate goal will be achieved. But he comes there with a particular purpose. Some are sent by the devil himself 
to go there and cause confusion and commotion. And so we need to be accommodative and know that, yes, indeed, this is Zion and God is here. So we leave everything in prayer. So if I am a church member, as I am a church member, when I am going to church in Middle East, I know for sure that I am going to meet people who are worse than me. And uh, I'm going to meet people who are better off than me. But Christ is the perfect one I am going to look at, not the perfect behind, beside <laughs> me. You know? And so if I am looking at Jesus Christ, no matter the behavior that another person will put up, I am not going to leave the church. I'm not going to let go because it is Christ. But those who haven't seen Christ for their sake, we need to portray those uh, who have encountered Christ, need to portray a behavior and a picture that will draw them. Let's care for one another. Let's look for one another. Let's be interested in one another's salvation. And by doing that, we will all mobilize ourselves into the heavenly Zion. All right. Um, in Psalm 46, reading from verses 1 to 7, we would want to read this quick. Psalm 46, 1 to 7. Um, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change, and though the mountains slip into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains quake at its swelling pride. Sila, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy dwelling places of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She will not be moved. God will help her. God will help her when morning dawns. The, the nations made an opera. The kingdoms torted. He raised his voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is a strong hold. Amen. 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 How safety and peace, peaceful, is the church of God today. Um, when, when you look at the text we just read, it is trying to um, depict how peaceful Zion or Jerusalem is. And so when war and all um, 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 calamities um, come upon the people, when they run to Zion, they have their peace. They have they they they, they can they, they can have peace in there. I want us to bring it home. Can we say that when there is war, when there is misunderstanding in the home, when there are issues surrounding us as Christians, and we run to the church of God today, we will have that peace. Pastor, can we? have that peace? And what are some of the things that we need to do so that we can have this peace we're talking about? In just one minute, all of us will give our, our, our take on this. All right, so you look at Psalm 46 and you see that God has given a promise that he will be a refuge and a strength in a very present help when we are going through trouble. troubles. Okay. And so when we depend solely on God, we would be able to unite the church for the church it's a place where God dwells. It's a refuge place, a place where whoever is rejected by society runs there and he, and he finds that refuge. And that's exactly how God does his work. And so God is inviting us as a church to sit and be prepared to learn about ways to reach out to people. Right. And so reaching out is very, very important, not just to sit there for the people to come, because his dwelling is going to be there for all people. But you left two verses that are very, quite very interesting. Right. I want you to add, and then we end it. And that's uh, verse 9 and 10. Verse 9 and 10. Okay, and, uh, read yeah. it up, Pastor. All right. Uh, okay, let me take it from here. That verse 9 says, He causes wars to end throughout the earth. All right. He breaks the bow and snaps the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He could do this. Why not stop Ukraine and the others? Mm -hmm. And so the verse 11, the 10 comes in. Be still and know that I am God. I'm still the Lord. I will be honored by every nation. A time is coming, my pastor. He's going to end all these things. All he right. will be honored. I will be honored throughout 
the world. Until then, God says, enjoy the life I have given you. Troubles will surround you. There will be challenges, but be still and know that I'm God. A time is coming. It will all end. Uh, Councillor Perfect. I would like to say that as we pray for peace for our nation, we need to live in peace. We need to act peacefully. And the church um, contains a lot of diverse people. Mm. So we are in election year. So we should be careful of what we say. We know that everybody belongs to a political party. Mm. But in the church, you don't overuse yours or say things that will make the other feel less. Mm. Because in Christ, we are one. This earthly kingdom is going to go away. It's the divine kingdom. It's the God's kingdom that we are aspiring to be in. So let us focus more on that than this earthly one. And our safety is in Jesus. Our safety, our refuge is in Jesus. So if you want that peace that surpasses all understanding in whatever you are going through, the best place to run to is the church and Jesus Christ. Thank you. And Isaac, your take on this, the church as a place of uh, peace and safety for those who are perplexed. Okay. Um, the world is actually filled with a lot of troubles, calamity, natural disasters, and a whole lot of things. These things in human beings, our lives, we may be discouraged or we may be, uh, we may try to go astray from the Almighty God. But God has actually given us the hope that if we will be steadfast and have that strength and have that great faith in, in Him, He is the only one who can save us from our troubles. He is the only one who has great hope for us that no matter whatever happens, one day, one day, He will deliver us from he our will trouble. Deliver us. God from has given us that divine protection. All right. So we should have the confidence that we have divine protection in God and we bear the stamp of God's love and his sanctuary. We should remember that the Lord is always with us. He's always on our side. And so come what may, the Lord will always fight for us. In Psalm 125, verses 1 to 2, the Bible makes it very clear to us that those who trust in the Lord are as Mount Zion, which cannot be moved but abides forever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people from this time forth and forevermore. The Lord is always by his people. My dear friend, the Lord is always by you. The Lord is with you, irrespective of what you are going through. Still trust in the Lord, for the Lord is good and his mercies really endures forever and ever. Um, to end today's discussion, we'll bow down our heads and pray with um, Pastor Loas. Let us pray. Lord, we find refuge in you. You are our only hope, and you have established Mount Zion, both in us, in your church, and also for eternity, where you will come to turn around things. And so this day, we call on your name, that take control and take charge of our lives, and most especially our private and personal lives, that we would be a place of refuge for others to come to know you. It is only through us that your name will be projected until the day where you will establish yourself for the entire universe to know and to see your power. Lord, bless us to stay close under your feet. There is somebody who is suffering my dear viewer who is going through crisis moment, please, Lord, going through difficulties and particular sins that he wants to or she wants to stop, this day, please lay your hands upon him or her Amen. and save to the utmost that everyone will say the Lord is indeed our Savior. Thank you for an answered prayer as you continue to spread the tentacles of hope channel and also the ministry you have given unto us here prepare us for your soon return and we will be ready to meet you in the skies in jesus name amen amen, amen. thank you very much my dear friend for watching hope channel and watching this episode next time um, next week same time will come your way with another wonderful discussion next week god willing we'll be looking at worship that never ends until that time God bless you and be with you. Bye-bye.